a hundred plus videos in, I get the distinct impression that uh, some of the people I'm debating with do not share the same axioms as I do. Now, when you don't share the same axioms, debate is very difficult, and you tend to inadvertently straw man each other. So, just so we can straighten this out, um, this, I believe, is the universe that we're dealing with. This is our view of um, existence. Okay, here, uh, on one side, we have oblivion, so we're not born yet, we don't exist, okay? Then we have life. And life has sort of a boundary around it, if you see, because it's finite. And then, of course, we have oblivion again. Okay, now these two states are infinite. This state is finite. This state has boundaries. Again, boundary around it, no boundary around these two. So, does what takes place within the boundaries of life have meaning and value and does it matter? I don't know that we have actually set the record straight. It looks to me as though we're of two minds even as we discuss this. I put it this way. If what takes place in life has value in one way, it has value in as many ways as we care to look at it. If harm has value, then joy has value. If joy does not have value, then harm does not have value. Both of these things, and an infinite number of other things, can only take place within the boundaries of the finity that is life. And I agree with that to a certain extent, because some people say, okay, Andy, you've said in the past that harm doesn't matter during life because it all gets erased after death. But let's just put you in the dentist chair and start drilling your teeth, and we'll see how much value you place on that kind of harm. I agree. I agree, and um, I'm not going to try and denigrate the value that we place on things. But what I will say is, we are accepting the value of harm within the confines of a finite suspended between two obliviums, between two infinities. Even though whatever, um, <clears throat> whatever harm comes along during the course of a, uh, of a human life is erased upon death, the very moment it's being experienced gives it value and it's all very well to say that we should all ignore this value but it doesn't work that way in real life I understand that and I accept that however we're going to have to allow the same latitude for meaning uh, for purpose what purpose we find during life has value because like the drill drilling into my teeth it jolly well feels like it's got value and if something feels like it's got value it's got value <laughs> um, here's another book that I think that a lot of us read when we were in university or earlier than that I guess um, and it has to do with um, with the, uh, the value that people place on life. Although he, Siddhartha, had reached a high stage of self-discipline and bore his last wound well, he now felt as if these ordinary people were his brothers. Their vanities, desires, and trivialities no longer seemed absurd to him. They had become understandable, lovable, and even worthy of respect. There was the blind love of a mother for her child, the blind foolish pride of a fond father for his only son, the blind eager striving of a young vain woman for ornament and the admiration of men. All these little simple foolish but tremendously strong, vital, passionate urges and desires no longer seemed trivial to Siddhartha. 
For their sake he saw people live and do great things, travel, conduct wars, suffer and endure immensely, and he loved them for it. He saw life, vitality, the indestructible, and Brahman in uh, all things, in all their desires and needs. These people were worthy of love and admiration in their blind loyalty, in their blind strength, and their tenacity. With the exception of one small thing, one tiny little thing, they lacked nothing that the sage and the thinker had. And that was the consciousness of the unity of all life. Make of that as you will. And many a time Siddhartha even doubted whether this knowledge, this thought, was of such great value. Whether it was not also perhaps the childish self-flattery of thinkers, who were perhaps only thinking children. The men of the world were equal to the thinkers in every other respect and were often superior to them, just as animals in their tenacious, undeviating actions in case of necessity may often seem superior to human beings. Just how real are the meanings that we place on life? Well, that's a question of uh, a question of value, I guess. It's just an opinion. It's a judgment. But it's no more a judgment and no less a judgment than the value that we place on anything else that happens to us here in uh, this spot between the two nothingnesses. If if harm has value at the moment that it's being experienced then meaning has equal value during the moment it is being experienced. If it doesn't, then neither do. Do we agree on that yet? Or if we're going to say that harm has more value than meaning, let's hear your arguments. Thank you.